Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to talk about Sentry, which is where I work, and how I sort of accidentally made every page load about 300 milliseconds faster. Uh, anyway, let's jump into that. Okay, in order to frame this, um, we're going to be looking at a particular page here. I was actually doing some other work related to deployments at Sentry. Uh, we're rolling out Canary deployments such that we can break only a small percentage of production traffic instead of all of it at once. <laughs> We've been doing for a while. Uh, but anyway, one part of doing that is I wanted to canary our front end deployments. Now, Sentry is mostly a JavaScript based front end application, at least the, the website part of it. Uh, and to do that, you kind of need CSS and JavaScript in order to render a page. And one thing that I was doing as part of this is making it so that uh, a small subset of our traffic could be served a different version of the front end app as the front end was being deployed. Uh, this wasn't possible due to the way that Sentry had set up uh, their CDN before this, uh, but you'll see now that we are serving this. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that. Yeah, we are serving this style sheet here, and it has a particular set of characters here that actually represent the SHA-256 hash of this file. Previously, it was unversioned, and so a deployment was basically sticking files on a CDN, and that is that change there is what led to the performance improvement. Now, I wanna walk you through exactly how this improved performance and what the problem was before and after. And in order to do that, I'm gonna be jumping in with curl and showing some web inspector stuff. And so you might be able to find a similar problem in your apps um, yourself. So let's actually start by copying this link and I'll show you the unversion. Well, the unversion uh, is to remove dash hashed and then to remove this little hash bit here. Uh, but if we do curl dash i, which is going to issue a head request, so it's not actually going to request this, uh, but it's going to show all of the headers that would have existed here. So if we do curl dash i here on this uh, hashed version here, you'll see that I get back this uh, this cache control. Uh, this tells the browser how long it is allowed to keep this uh, asset for, and you'll see here that it's max age big number here i think this is a year or a month or some extremely long amount of time uh such that a browser can see this cache control header and it knows it doesn't need to re-request this asset at a later date and so generally what this means is if you were to load a sentry page so if we go back to the browser here and i open up our inspector and we look at network and let's specifically look at css so that we can see that particular style sheet if we load the page again, um, you'll see that, well, you'll actually say that there are no CSS requests here, because if we go to all, there should be a cached one here. Actually clear this and clear this and load it again. That way we can see from the top. So there should somewhere in here be a style sheet. Uh, JS, HTML, hmm, we don't see it at all, okay. Well, that is actually, in theory, what we want to see here is that there is no CSS. I guess if we filter to CSS, yeah, we didn't we didn't get any CSS requests here. And that's because it's cached. Uh, and that's, that's what we want to see here. So if we were to refresh the page, you'll see that we get this initial request here. And then the second time we load this, no, no CSS requests are happening. I, I guess if I switch to Chrome, it would show that it's cached and it uh, would actually show us that. Let's just do it in Chrome. Oops, uh, <laughs> spoilers, here's the improvement, but we'll, we'll look at that in a second. Okay, so if we inspect and we look at network and we specifically want CSS and we do a hard refresh, you'll see that we load this the first time. And then if we try and request it the second time, we're gonna get it from disk cache. So it's not gonna spend really any time here trying to do that lookup. Uh, actually, I guess we see like eight milliseconds of it processing, but you know, it's essentially zero. So that's the main difference here. Now the way it worked before uh, was it was cached, but in a way that required the browser to make a round trip in order to validate that cache. And uh, it uses um, a, a header called etag. You'll see that there's actually an etag in this one as well, but it doesn't get used due to this max age here. Uh, it's not loading, there we go. Uh, you'll see here that we get an e tag. This identifies this particular resource, and the browser will use this to re request this at a later date. That's what this uh, must revalidate bit is here. Basically, the browser knows that, um, you know, if I see this e tag, or if I make a request with this e tag and I get a not modified response, then I can use the thing I have on disk 
but it still has to make that request. And that request is expensive. And for style sheets, it's blocking. It's in the indirect path of loading the page. Now, in order to demo this, uh, the easiest way that I found to do this is to make a little HTML document. You'll see that I have this here. I have put this uh, style sheet directly into this document. So I basically just pasted the, the unhashed link and we have hello world here. If we open up this bit of HTML here um, and we have these other tabs here and we look at our network tab here, uh, we do a hard refresh to see the initial page load. You see we get our 200 here. Uh, it takes 230 milliseconds to get the 200. Uh, kind of a funny thing here. If we reload the page now, it's going to make a request to see if it's cached. That actually takes 212 milliseconds. So we're, we're saving almost nothing. <laughs> the overhead of the request itself is almost as much as uh, getting this, the style sheet itself. But you'll see here that we got a cached response and it made an actual request here and the server responded with a 304 not modified. Uh, now the way it did this is, let's see, where's request headers? Yeah, request headers down here. Uh, so it uh, issued these if none match and passed along the e tag, and the the remote server was able to say, oh, you've already got the up to date version. Here's a 304 not modified, and you could load the version from disk. Now, and you know, that requires a round trip, and that round trip is about 200 milliseconds, at least on here. Um, there were several of these in the blocking path, so there was the style sheet as well as the script tag for the JavaScript entry point. And so I was able to eliminate both of those and get a pretty noticeable and sizable uh, load time improvement on every Sentry page. Uh, Sentry actually has a profiling and performance product. I don't remember which one of it. I think this is the performance product here. Uh, and so you can actually visualize the change directly in the spans of how the page was loaded. Now it's a little hard to see here, but uh, this first resource up here is the style sheet, this one here. And so you can kind of see that even in the cached form, it's taking about 200 milliseconds to load the style sheet. You can also see the app.js. This is the actual Sentry application JavaScript. And that's also taking about you know 186 milliseconds here. This is, this is a sort of faster one. Uh, and this represents that round trip to try and get that cached uh, 304 and continue on with processing. Now, after my change, both of these spans essentially disappear. You'll see this is the uh, the new version of this where our uh, entry point app.js here is 0, 0.00 milliseconds. And that's because it's completely cached from disk. Uh, we also see the uh, style sheet taking eight milliseconds here. This is probably DNS, I don't really know. We saw the same thing locally. So I don't have a good explanation for why this is eight milliseconds. Like I kind of expect it to be zero, but maybe that's the DNS lookup or something like that. But basically by switching from an e tag based caching to a URL based caching, I completely eliminated that round trip and the rendering of, uh, of the browser can start that much faster. Anyway, I uh, wanted to walk you through how I improved Sentry. Uh, it's really cool that I work for an open source company so I can exactly show you <laughs> what I did and how I improved it. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.